Hey, what's up everybody, it's Rutek. Today, we'll be talking about the five most important settings that all Windows gamers should at the very least take a look at to improve their gaming experience. Now, let me tell you guys something. I have built many PCs and I will tell you right now, there's always a handful of settings that I need to change before I do anything else such as benchmarking or anything involving playing a game. The out of the box Windows experience is definitely not optimized for gamers, especially if you're running on a budget PC. But even if you are running high specs, there are certainly some settings you'll want to enable or disable anyway. Now, before we get started talking about these five settings that you should change, I first want to tell you about Digital Chill Mart. DigitalChillMart.com is the best place to get cheap Windows 10 license keys. If you're building a PC or have built one, but you're still running an unactivated version of Windows, Digital Chill Mart has you covered. Simply go to the front page of their website, scroll down a little bit, and you'll find Windows 10 Home and Pro for great prices. And the price gets better, I have a coupon code for you guys to use. Type in Rutech right here and it'll instantly be applied. Link for Digital Chill Mart will be in my description. All right, so the first Windows setting we're gonna be looking at is Game DVR. So there's like two different Game DVRs out there that will come with your PC once it's all set up, which is the Xbox Game DVR and the Nvidia or AMD Game DVR. And you certainly don't need both of them running at once, so here's what I recommend. 100% disable the built-in Xbox Game DVR. It's pretty easy to do this. All you have to do is go to the Windows search bar, type in Capture, click Captures Settings, then find the setting that says record in the background while I'm playing a game, and then turn it off. As most of you probably know, screen recording while you're gaming will definitely cause a decrease in FPS. But if you actually do want to use Game DVR so that you can clip your great plays on Valorant or whatever it may be, if you're using an NVIDIA card, you should use the GeForce Experience app instead of the Xbox Game DVR. And if you have an AMD card, use AMD Adrenaline to capture your clips. Download links to both of these programs will be in my description. Now let's move on to the next setting, which is the Enhance Pointer Precision setting. This one is probably the most recommended settings change out there, and chances are you already know about it, but for those who don't, what this pretty much does is it changes the sensitivity of the mouse depending on the rate at which you are moving. This feature will calculate the velocity of the mouse and adjust the DPI on the fly. Obviously, while gaming, you definitely do not want your DPI to randomly be going up and down, as it'll make you perform extremely inconsistently. Not sure about you guys, but I would like to be popping off at a consistent rate and not have to have my DPI all over the place. So definitely go ahead and disable this setting if you have not already. To disable this setting, it's super easy. Go to the Windows search bar, type in pointer, and then click on change the mouse pointer display or speed. And then under pointer options, disable enhance pointer precision and click apply. And just like that, you will be top fragging every single game you join. The next setting, which is exclusive to people with Ryzen CPUs, is the Ryzen Power Plan. If you don't have a Ryzen CPU, you can just skip this segment. So what you're going to want to do is download your chipset drivers. To do this, you'll first, of course, want to know what motherboard you're rocking. For example, my PC is using a B450 motherboard. The easiest way to find out your chipset from my findings is going to userbenchmark.com, running a test, and going to the page it directs you to, which will tell you what motherboard you have. As you can see here, the test results tell me I have a B450 chipset motherboard. Once you know your chipset, you're going to want to go to the AMD drivers and support page, click chipset, click the socket type, it's going to be AM4, and then click your chipset. For me, it's B450, so that's what I'll be downloading. Click Windows 10 64-bit edition and then download AMD chipset drivers. Once that's downloaded, drag the folder to wherever you'd like so that you can extract the contents. When that's finished, open the folder and run the executable file. And then go ahead and just let it do its thing. This should take, I'd say, less than five minutes. And once it's finally done installing, you'll want to, of course, make sure you have AMD Ryzen Power Plan checked off. You don't need all the other programs to get the Ryzen Power Plan, but I recommend you install them anyway. And once it's finished, you'll need to restart your computer. And from here, it's super easy. All you have to do is go to the Windows search bar, type in power, click choose a power plan, and click on AMD Ryzen High Performance. This will give you a slight but pretty decent FPS boost in all games. The fourth setting and don't be offended when I uh, say this, 
but I want you guys to check out your refresh rate. See if it's actually matching the refresh rate that's advertised on your monitor. And you may be asking why, well, watch this video clip. Now it's the refresh rate, is it on 144 hertz or 60? No way. You have a 144 hertz screen and you've never been playing with 144 hertz? Ah, that makes a lot Greek. So yeah, I mean, it would make sense if Windows automatically set your refresh rate to the maximum possible hertz that your monitor can output, but it doesn't. So to make sure that it is, this is what you have to do. It's pretty simple. Right click your desktop, click display settings, and then click advanced display settings. Then click this drop down menu right here and make sure it's the highest refresh rate available. Now I know most of you probably already knew this, but some people plug in their new 144 hertz monitor and think that Windows automatically set it to 144 hertz and they're getting like a placebo effect of playing at 60 hertz, but they think it's 144, kind of like Greek in that clip. So yeah, just make sure you change your refresh rate when you upgrade to a higher refresh rate monitor. And the fifth and final tip I have for you guys is to take a look at and potentially change your NVIDIA control panel setting. I'm only going to walk through the NVIDIA side of things with this tip, but you definitely can change things on the AMD control panel as well to get more performance. So on the NVIDIA control panel, you'll see a bunch of different tabs and settings you're going to want to click on manage 3D settings. Image sharpening will skip since it won't cause any performance changes, but if you do want to sharpen up your game a little bit, get a little more clarity, turn it on. Ambient occlusion pretty much gives you more depth with shapes. Here's an example of it on and off. You'll want it on if you want nicer looking graphics and off if you want more performance. Anastropic filtering prevents textures from becoming a blurred mess the farther away they get from you. Keeping this on will use up more resources and turning it off will give you more frames. Anti-aliasing prevents jagged edges. Here's an example. Turning this off will boost performance, while turning it on will make your games look nicer, but will cause them to run a bit slower. Gamma correction will make sure that your colors don't get all screwed up, especially when it comes to dark scenarios. This actually has pretty much no performance impact, so you can change this to your liking. Personally, I like to keep it on. These two you'll want to keep as application controlled. As for anti-aliasing transparency, this pretty much smooths out edges of textures with transparency effects. On will make games look better for the sake of a little bit of a performance loss, and turning it off will obviously give you more performance. What background application max frame rate does is it limits the frame rate of the game you're playing while you're tabbed out. Now, if you don't have a strong PC, you definitely should limit the frame rate so you can reallocate your resources to whatever you're doing while you aren't actually playing the game. Otherwise though, leaving it off is totally fine. Make sure CUDA GPUs is set to all. Keep DSR off. For low latency mode, unless you have a very strong CPU, be sure to keep that at off. Although it sounds super appealing, when this is turned on, it utilizes the CPU a ton, and if you have a weak processor, you'll experience a lot of lag spikes and micro stutters. For monitor technology, ensure that G-Sync compatible is selected if it is there. For multi-frame sampled AA, keep this off. The benefits don't really outweigh the performance cost, even if you have a stronger graphics card. OpenGL rendering GPU, keep that at auto select. For power management mode, you'll of course want to be at prefer maximum performance, unless you're trying to save some pennies on your power bill, but I really doubt that you are. For preferred refresh rate, select highest available, so you can of course have the smoothest experience with the monitor that you're using. Keep shader cache on. Turn off anastropic sample optimization, its performance impact isn't worth the very slight change in graphics. Put negative LOD bias to allow if you have a slower computer and would like to see more frames. And if you have a stronger system and want to see a better picture, set it to clamp. For texture filtering quality, you'll pretty much want to choose based on whether you want to get more performance or better picture. You're pretty much just picking from either having more performance or more image quality. Keep threaded optimization at auto. Turn triple buffering off if you have a G-Sync compatible monitor, otherwise turn it on. For vertical V-Sync, keep the setting at use the 3D application setting. And the other two you can ignore. And that's pretty much it for the NVIDIA control panel and the rest of the video. That's it, those are the five tips. Now there are a ton of other settings in Windows that you can change that'll probably give you a significant performance boost if that's what you're looking for. But today I'm just covering a general five settings for various things that gamers would care about that aren't directly related to performance boost. I'll save that for another video. Let me know if you want to see something like that. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like. If you have any comments or questions, drop a comment below. And if you enjoy the content you're seeing, drop a sub. Thanks for watching. Peace out.